today on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about surrendering. Are you able to surrender in life? How do you try and control instead of letting go? Do you wonder what surrendering is and isn't? Learn how to surrender as we continue our month focused on spring cleaning. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? On Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. Today's episode was inspired by my own challenge to surrender. If you have been listening for a while, you know about some grief and had really tried to surrender to something last year and I couldn't. I was really challenged with it and it didn't happen. So on one hand, I'm kind of forced to surrender, although it's not completely surrendering. However, I have been in the past sometimes successful in being able to surrender. I don't think it's an easy thing. I know a lot of people find it challenging. And if you're someone who does, hopefully today will help you out. But it's inspired by my own struggle with this. It's something I hope to improve on. And I've, it's just a really interesting process for me right now in my life. And I thought it's springtime. What a really great time. We have hope. We have renewal. I, for the first time as I record this, have feel hopeful in a long time in several months, so that's kind of exciting, and so kind of surrendering that hope. And the first thing I want to talk about was what surrender is not. And I got this from Psychology Today, when it's time to let go and control and surrender, and it was a, a blog, and I thought this was so brilliant. Instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, I thought how this author just, I couldn't have sent it as eloquently, and I thought this is a really important point because this is something that I've had to learn about and grow. So what surrender isn't? And I think when you break it down like this, that it really helps you more, because you're like, okay. And I love what she said. Surrender is not failure or defeat. Think about if we get caught up in that, like, oh, if I, I've lost, if I surrender. I know that I used to feel that way. Punishment, surrendering is not punishment. I don't know if I've ever viewed surrendering as punishment. Have you? It's not a decision to let go. I thought that was really interesting because that's probably how I would have defined surrendering. It is definitely not, and sadly I know this all too well, a task that we can accomplish with our mind. Can't sit there and say, I will myself to surrender. I will myself to surrender and concentrate really hard. Doesn't happen that way. Because if it did, We'd all be able to do it, right? It'd be pretty easy. It is also not a state that we can will ourselves into. When someone said to me, you have to surrender, I was like, but I don't know how. I couldn't, it's something, we're going to talk about it later, but it's not something that you can snap your fingers, wake up and say, I surrender. It's not something by meditating for hours that you can do, although meditating might support your surrendering. It's just, you can't make it happen. I'm hoping that this is making sense. I also love this. It's not an ending. It's not a bad thing, right? I think we see this sometimes surrendering as being a bad thing because it's like we think we're giving up or we're not trying. And that's not the case. And it's definitely not an ending because I really believe this one, one door closes, another door opens. Now I'm kind of in the what is it, the purgatory of that? A door has closed. I'm kind of feeling the door is opening again, but not quite there yet. And the final thing, or one of the things she said, the final one I'm sharing is the decision to be comfortable with what is. I don't like what, how things are, some of the things are in my life. I wasn't comfortable with how things, something happened. And that's okay. If I feel this way and I'm not thrilled with what is, although that's where suffering comes from, then that's not just surrendering. So that is A-OK. So I first encourage you, mull these over about what surrender is not. Consider where in your life you've used this definition of surrendering and that it might have tripped you up. 
I mean, that's a, a good place conceivably to start to say, okay, let me really look at what it isn't and how I've misapplied that and it perhaps has negatively affected me. So what surrender is? Now from the same article, I took a block quote here because I thought it was really good. We're going to talk about a couple of different definitions of surrender, but I thought this was a great quote. Again, because they just worded it so well. Surrender happens when we know that we don't know, right? Think about that for a moment. I, I don't know. I don't know everything. That's the first thing admitting, you know what? I don't have all the answers. I think we do have a lot of answers within, but there are some things that are greater than us, that there's a power, however you define that, that a divine intelligence that is perhaps in control. It arrives when we know that we cannot think or see our way through where we are. How many times have we been in that situation? Like, I don't know what to do next. Have you ever just fallen to your knees and said, God, universe, divine intelligent, I don't know what to do. I, I, I don't know what to do. I'm lost. I can't see my way through. In true surrender, we don't know if what's to come will be better or worse, more comfortable or more awful right? That's one of the reasons we're holding on to control, because if I control it, then I can make sure it's the decision and the outcome that I want, and then it's going to be good. We surrender. We don't know what we're going to get. We have no idea. But when you reach that moment of surrender, here's what happens. All we know is that we can't do it this way, the way we've been doing it a moment longer. Surrenders happens when it can't not happen. I'll say that again. That's kind of a little bit of a mouthful. Surrender happens when it can't not happen. Kind of like I would equate this to being at the end of your rope. I've done everything I can. I have to let it go. I have to surrender. I did everything I could to accomplish a dream. It didn't happen. I gave it my all. And it didn't turn out. It turned out bad. In my view, it turned out bad. I don't know if I would use that word. I'd say heartbreaking. And, but I did everything I could and I just have to trust there is a reason it didn't work out and move forward. Another definition of surrender could be it's accepting what is, I think I might've talked about this and trusting it'll all turn out. Okay. I kind of, again, feel like I'm in the purgatory. Okay. Well, I, I have to, I really don't have a choice. The end of the line came for me. So I have to accept what is. I can't change it. Hmm, trusting it'll turn out okay? Yeah, I'm not there yet. You know, give me another five or ten years. Surrender's complete acceptance of what is and having the faith that all is well, even when I'm not in control. It's another way to think about it. Again, in that purgatory space for me. I think it's when, you know, guys, when I do these podcasts, I do them for you. It is my gift. I love doing this, and it's for me as well. I have to do these podcasts usually, I'm usually two months out. So for instance, this is February and I'm shooting April's just because there are so many things you got to get uploaded, yada, 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 that that just is the nature of things. And I kind of sketch out for the year with flexibility what I'm going to do, kind of what I feel inspired to do, and then take it at the beginning of the recording month, what I'll actually do. And, you know, I'd done that thing, grief, like probably a couple months before grief really hit. And I was like, oh, how valuable is this? I got to listen to myself, give myself advice and hopefully pay attention to it. So if you're tuning in and watching and listening, I hope you benefit, but it benefits me as well. The thing about surrender, it's going to happen in its own timetable. We can't force it as much as our ego is probably going to try. And, and that's the hard thing. I know when I was really trying really, really hard, oh, I've got to surrender. No, it doesn't work that way. And it stinks, quite frankly. But once you do, here's what's great. You find peace. When you say you don't know what, how to do it, don't know what the next step is, you get a break from suffering. If you listen to why I love my husband, best thing that ever happened to me. Prior to my husband, I was on and off with someone for a really long time. I love this man. Wasn't the right guy for me. There is, I have nothing but wonderful things and thoughts about him, but 
I'll never forget when I knew it was over. Because, see, I was afraid. I think it was fear on both sides. Afraid to let it go because what if there's no one else there out for me? That was my biggest fear. I'm never going to find anyone. I'm going to be alone. That was personally one of my fears. And when I knew it was truly over, I was literally down on my knees sobbing. I, I really equate it to crying like an animal. Just these guttural sounds, just this grief. Yeah, 15, 20 minutes. And then it was over. You know, it didn't mean I still didn't have heartache, but I had finally achieved peace. Because I had to surrender that it wasn't going to happen. I had to surrender to the possibility that I might never find someone. And it doesn't, again, mean that things were easy all the time or have heartbreak. But it did pave the way to open me up because energetically what I believe was happening, I'm stuck on this guy, I'm stuck on this guy, so I'm not available for another man. You know, everything's energy and even if we're not aware of it or those unconscious thoughts, we, people pick up on it. And again, I think for the most part, there's not a ton of awareness in this, but it was like having a sign on my head that said unavailable. So when I surrendered, the available sign happened. So when you're surrendering, it's giving up's not the right term, and it might feel like it's giving up to you. So I'd probably add that's another definition of not what, of what it isn't giving up. We what we're letting go of, what we're releasing is that our ability to control or manage the situation, and believing that we're in charge, or believing like for me that I can make the outcome different than what I desire you reach that point where you know that more effort isn't going to make a difference. It is what it is. You can't change it. And, you know, I think one of the challenges is a lot of times as human, we're conditioned to never give up. And that what Winston Churchill said, I think I quoted that in another episode, never, ever, ever give up. Because that's kind of how we're built. But that's a mistaken belief. And when you do surrender, like I mentioned a moment ago, it was, I found peace for the situation and I felt relief. It can be done. Again, again, doesn't mean it's easy, but you can surrender. The other thing that's going on when you surrender is you're letting go of expectations, right? I did an episode on that on the podcast, Great Expectations. You know that you gave it your all, you did what you could. But once you do that, that allows you to become more present. And instead of focusing on controlling the outcome and how you think it should be, then life kind of opens up. It's like that the example, the straw, I'm trying to control it, control it. And what I'm doing is I'm pinching the flow of life. I'm not allowing a source bigger than me, the universe, divine intelligent, God, I'm not allowing that awesomeness to come into life. Overwhelmed by clutter? Feel stuck? Would you like to feel energized and excited? Are you not sure what direction to go? Julie Caraccio offers lifestyle coaching to people from all walks of life who know something needs to change, but they aren't sure where to start. Visit reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how Julie can support you with life coaching. Why don't we surrender? You know, it's mainly from we want to control. And what's control really about? Our controls come from fear. I fear I'm never going to find someone. I fear that my business won't succeed. I fear that I will never get a degree. I fear that this relationship won't work out, whatever it is. So examine what you're trying to control in your life and take it down. What's the fear behind what you're controlling? Because the fear and the control is what prevents you from surrendering. We sometimes don't surrender because we have a specific outcome in mind. We think we know what's best for us. And again, I'm, I'm hope I'm being really clear here because I always say look within because you do know the answers and what's best for you. And there's a second part to that, that greater intelligence is that divineness that we want to bring into our life, perhaps knows more than we do or can see 
the greater picture that we sometimes always can't has that greater perspective. The time I mentioned when things didn't work out with that guy, I couldn't imagine there were some things that were really great about it. I couldn't imagine anything better and I got way better. And that's not a slam against the act. It's just my husband is the right guy for me, no doubt. I have he just things that were really important to me. And I'm grateful to that man because had I not learned things from him, I don't know if I would have been open to my husband. So when we have that hindsight of 2020, you know, again, hindsight, that's the whole term. When it doesn't work out, we can just take that step back and be like, oh, now I get why that didn't work out. But, you know, unfortunately, we're usually in the moment and it's going on. We can't access that wisdom. Everything's energy. So if you're in that fight mode, all the time and that energy that's kind of got momentum behind it about not wanting to surrender oh, i'm gonna fight it i'm gonna fight it i'm gonna win and that's kind of your frame of mind that can prevent you from surrendering how do you surrender right we've talked about it's got to kind of happen on its own time you really can't force it but there are some things i think you can do to support it and here from that psychological psychology, I don't want to call it psychological guys, psychology today. I thought this was a great quote. Surrender at its core is a willingness to meet life as it is. I have a book, it's packed, and the title is As Is. And I think she wrote too, As Is and And is the other one. So it's the willingness to meet life as it is to stop fighting with or trying to change what is so right now. Because that's what we don't want. No, this is what I want. I'm going to fight, 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 fight. Loving what is. That's the name of the book. So loving what is. And remarkably, no matter what the catalyst or whether it's a moment surrender or a lifetime, the result of gift that accompanies it remains the same. Relief. Gratitude grace, and sometimes even joy. I talked about after I cried like an animal, it was relief. I was like, oh my gosh, the energy and time and effort I've put into this. Having gratitude for the ex, because he taught me some things and allowed me to be open to my awesome husband. And feeling a sense of grace. I was a victim of a crime in LA and I took some self-defense classes and Empowering myself to learn how to take care of myself and to be able to defend myself. It allowed me at a moment to have grace. Like I can put my mind at ease. I can be at peace with what happened. And when you do all that, then sometimes bring you joy. And again, I feel like I'm going to feel the joy again. I still feel like as I record this in kind of this place of purgatory. Remember that surrendering is going to happen in stages. I can look back and say like, oh, you know, like I cleared out some souvenirs and momentums of my relationship with the ex and did it in stages. There'd be days I felt like I surrendered, mm, maybe the next day, not quite. And so it's again, this thing where for most of us, it's not going to happen overnight. So just know, it's going to come in stages, going to come and go. But that's a good thing. You're on the path. You're doing it. Examine your fears. I mentioned a moment ago, when, what is behind your need to control? Because when you can bring it down the fear, okay, I'm afraid I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life. That was a huge fear for me. And I didn't know the joys of cats and feel bad because I wish I would have owned about a zillion cats before I found Tony, but I was allergic. I still am and don't get, I'm surprised I can breathe quite frankly with three cats. But anyway. What are your fears? I'm afraid I'm going to be alone. Well, let's, let's examine that for a second. Well, you have your parents. You're really not alone. You have your siblings. You have your brothers. You're really not alone. You have your awesome nieces and nephew. Really not alone. You have your extended family. You have friends. Huh. Well, I'm really not alone. Okay, well, I'm going to argue back. I, I desire, I'm afraid I'm not going to have a romantic partner. Okay that might happen. And so what are we going to do? Are we going to sit around and wait? 
Are we going to make an effort to find someone? Or how else will we fulfill that need to connect? Do you volunteer somewhere? Do you adopt an animal or a child? What way are you going to be able to fulfill that desire that you have? When looking at your fears, examine if it's yours or someone else's. I used to definitely, I would take on a lot of stuff. And that's one thing. I just posted a little thing on Instagram today. I'm calling back my energy and releasing the energy that's not mine. And I was like, oh, I need to get back into doing that on a regular basis. And if you listen to my interview with Judy, my teacher, my first teacher ever that I absolutely love, one of the basics I learned with her. So is it your stuff or is it someone else's? Because a lot of times, guys, every single moment of the day, we're getting stuff thrown at us, whether it's from society, parents, teachers, kids, siblings, everyone. You know, we want control, want to do this, throwing stuff at us. So is it your voice who's really saying that fear or is it someone else's? Take time to examine that. Can you love what is right now? That book is Loving What Is. Can you be present in the moment and feel and sense? Again, not with the ego. Now, we can't get angry with the ego. The ego has a job to do. And some ways, ego is really well. I'm moving, guys. I would lose my mind if I wasn't organized. And I halfway feel like I'm losing my mind because there are so many balls up in the air right now. So thank you, ego. You were organized. You helped me. But on some other places and in some other places, not so much. So become present as much as possible. How does it feel? In the moment, you know what? I can love what it is right now. So practice that as you're able to. Releasing, trying to control everything. Deep breathing. Letting go of those expectations of results and outcome. You know, the more you breathe into it, the more you release it, the easier it becomes. That's surrendering. Okay, you know what? I'm afraid right now. I feel alone. Okay, well, who can I call? What can I do? What action can I take? Okay, let me just feel this. Oh, I feel alone. I feel it in my stomach. My stomach's real. Oh, I feel afraid. Okay, what can I do? Breathe into my stomach. Close my eyes. What can I do right now to alleviate that? And maybe you get relief for a couple minutes, but that's surrendering. You're doing it. Spend time on what it's like right now. Is it, is it okay right now? Hmm, yeah, you know what? I am alone, but you know what doesn't feel so bad. Hmm, okay. This is how it is right now, okay. You know what, I can surrender to it in this moment. I might feel differently tomorrow, but in this present moment, I can do it. Can you trust? Can you have faith that everything is working out for your good? And again, remember, this happens in stages. You might have a glimpse of that. That's part of the surrender. It might take you a year, might take you a little longer, and that's okay. That kind of when I felt that peace, that relief with the ex, I was like, okay. I would tell myself, okay, let's try and trust. Bake it till you make it, kind of. Let's trust that you're going to meet some groovy man, and then it's going to work out as it should. So how does trust and faith look to you? How can you... Bring more of that into your life. What can you do? Can you review your life when it's worked out really well and you just trusted and you surrendered and it worked out? Can you look at something and say, ah, you know what? In hindsight, that was the best thing that happened to me. Take some time to review and look through your life where faith, trust, you said, okay, I'm just going to trust it and it worked out. Take the time to acknowledge that. Have gratitude for all that. Again, you know, gratitude and love, I believe, are the highest vibration. So when you're examining this, what's a good that can happen? Even in a situation, finding that golden nugget, finding that gratitude, whereas, you know what, this isn't really how I'd hoped it happened and it wasn't the outcome I really desired. But what was good about this? What was good about this? Oh, it allowed me time to write my book. I wasn't focusing my energy on a relationship anymore. What is the positive that you can find? And you know what? Even if it's, remember, itty bitty, you, you grow upon that. 
that little seed grows and sprouts. So the more you water it, the more you tend to it. And again, it's remember, it's that process. It's not, you're not just going to snap your fingers and have it happen. When stuff's going on and it's not turning out as you desire, can you change your perspective? See that what you don't want may be part of the solution. I had a friend that for years hated her job. And I wouldn't say hate, that's not a fair assessment. She was in a situation where they kept downsizing and laying off people. And, you know, that's a really hard situation. I could be laid off tomorrow and living, but she was living in that constant fear for years. And then it finally happened. She got laid off. And you know what? Relief was the first thing that happened. She traveled. She at that point was able to surrender. Well, I have no control of this. Not only in a, first of all, she had a couple months off and was able to collect unemployment, was able to travel and came back and found an even better job. So part of the solution to all this was getting laid off. So see if you can look in your life where something that maybe you're saying and resisting might actually be what you need. And then, you know, part of it is just simply trying to find happiness and joy when you don't get what you want. Still a work in progress on this, guys. And again, it, it's, I'm in a good space now where I feel like I finally have hope that I haven't had for a long time. And I was thinking this morning, I have to laugh. I didn't tell Tony this. He'd probably be like, oh my gosh, I had a dream that Tony brought home a kitten. And I was so excited. I think especially we have an elderly cat, Joey's going to be 15 and, and, uh, Having a brother and sister has been good for him, but I think no more cat out of respect for Joey because he's elderly and it's, we're about to move, a lot of change. Anyway, I had this great dream that Tony brought home a cat and I kind of have to chuckle because he'd probably be like, what are you dreaming about that? But I've noticed that. So I was thinking this morning, woke up, had this dream and I love, there are certain things that I just find complete joy and happiness. I was thinking this morning, had Titi on the bed, Joey was here. Antonio's weird. He won't sleep on the bed. And uh, I don't know. I want to upgrade to a king size bed. There's not a lot. We're downsizing, but we just need, because I have no room on the bed. Okay, let's just be honest. But I was thinking this morning that I love these times. I love just being with the family in bed or at nighttime when Tony hasn't come home yet and he works a swing shift. So he comes, he's home about 1130 and and I've got all the cats hanging out with me, Joey and Titi on the bed, Antonio will jump up sometime, but those little moments give me joy and the happiness. So I build upon that. Oh, it's those little things. So find out, out how to be happy when the outcomes aren't what you desire. Take actions from today's podcast. Define what Surrender means to you. Acknowledge where you haven't been able to surrender. Practice releasing control in any way that you can. Love what is right now. Find the good and the bad. Trust you'll be able to surrender in due time. On next month's episode, we're talking about reconnecting with the kid in you in our one-minute wisdom. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, Please rate, review, and share us.